let's spend the next 10 minutes or so. I'm going to show you some things you can do with LinkedIn and Apollo together. And then there's going to be a Q&A. So if there's anything, I saw a ton of great questions, a lot of good comments in the chat while Zoe's going here. And I saw a couple folks saying, uh, like Melinda earlier on was saying, LinkedIn connections have supported me for the past five years. And then I saw folks talking about how your connections, your brand on there is kind of like an asset. And that makes sense to me. It's one of the reasons I'm going to do Zoe's challenge. So again, in terms of what we can tie together with Apollo, your outbound efforts and our social selling, things I want to walk through real quick are ways you can find best fit leads in LinkedIn, saving them to Apollo. There's a couple different ways to do this and they all have their own benefits. You can actually import your LinkedIn connections from LinkedIn into Apollo, enrich them, either some or all of them. And then I'm going to show you uh, what you can do with some of those LinkedIn sequence steps. A lot of there's a couple there that are, have some subtle genius that a lot of folks don't use, and they can really help tie in what Zoe was just talking about. So let me load up my LinkedIn here. We'll get started. There we go. So we're on LinkedIn. Now I'm going to do this in the free one. There's more you can do with Sales Navigator, but there's a lot you can do in the free LinkedIn that most folks don't even take advantage of. And one of the reasons they don't take advantage is because it would really pop in your head because you wouldn't have a way to simply organize stuff. So I'm going to tie in what you can do with Apollo through some of these creative searches, and now you can actually capitalize on it. So one of those ways is to start off with what you might already be doing, or a lot of folks doing, is just searching for folks that might have the title. So for this, I'm going to be searching for sales leaders and cold calling to see if they want me to do some sales instruction. When you go to people, after you put title in, you've got access to a few filters on top, but there's a whole bunch more when you hit this all filters button. So one of the ones I picked up from a great salesperson a few years ago is to start with second level connections. And it was a mentor of mine. It was saying, give yourself as many lottery tickets, as many chances to get lucky as possible. So in this regard, you can do second and you'll know that everybody you're seeing is now connected to somebody you know, a chance to get lucky in that situation. But when you go to all filters, again, so a place that most don't really go, you'll notice that you can then narrow it down to people who follow somebody specifically. Maybe that's somebody who wrote a book, an influencer, somebody that what you do would match up or you know a lot about them. If they're actively hiring locations, the schools they went to, if they've worked at the company you've worked at, went to your same college, that sort of thing. And at the bottom, you can actually use some keywords there. So I'm going to pop in adding a creator here. One of my favorite sales authors is Jill Conrath. She actually doesn't do sales books anymore, still writes wonderful stuff, but it's often something that if anybody knows her work, it's referenced sometimes when I've done trainings and here I'm selling them. So I'm gonna narrow it down to people who have the right title. They're connected to people I know and they follow an author I think is really good and has inspired some of my sales training. And you notice that's now narrowed it down to 3,100. That's a lot. A lot A lot of times, maybe, I don't think most get to adding a follower or an influence or something like that. They just start saving leads. Many of these might be good, but can I give myself another chance at getting lucky or having something to generate rapport, right? Warm, having a connection. I like to use location and choose where I live. I live in Chicago, Illinois, so I'll put the greater Chicago area. And now it's narrowed down from thousands and thousands to, to only 315 people that are the right title. They follow Jill Conrath and they're in the Chicago area. Maybe because I've talked to Jill, maybe who knows, I could get her to help me out on some of these. So that's a great list. I'd like to start saving some leads from here. And of course that can be a little bit difficult. You just got to pop over to them, connect or go add them in manually. If you don't, if you, if you use Apollo and you don't have the Apollo Chrome extension, I'd recommend going to get it. There'll be a link in the resource kit because you'll notice it adds something to the search results right here. You can select all or net new. This is a way to, net new would be only adding the ones, the saved leads to your account if they're not already there. So this is a list I'd like to work. It's narrowed down. I'm gonna click net new. And as opposed to just saving them, the problem, the reason a lot of folks don't even take advantage of these features is because it's not organized. So you then can't create sequences that'll help you tailor your follow-ups, the text you use, the lingo, whatever it might be, to what you know about them. So you can pick net new, choose a list if you don't have one. I like to give myself clarity at a glance. These are LinkedIn, second, 
Chicago, Jill Conrath. There won't be any confusion there. Now that net new only works per page. So maybe you want to start with 20, 30, 40, whatever it might be. I'm going to do that and save them there. And I'm starting to build up a list where I already have some things I know about them and it's all organized. I could build a sequence that would match to it. One other idea would be to, again, start with the title. And I, th I saw somebody talking about this the other day in our sales community on Slack. So there's different ways of doing this, but whenever a new hire joins the organization, usually this is gonna be an executive, but at your company, if there's a new executive, something you can do is look for the type of person that you wanna to sell to. I like to start with the ones I'm not already connected to. So I, I usually start with second level, go to all filters, and I'm gonna pop in somebody that recently joined Apollo just two weeks ago. An executive at Apollo now was previously in leadership at Salesforce, my new boss, and hit show results. So now here's a list of 228 folks I'm not connected with, the type of person I normally like to sell to in there, all connected with my boss. Once again, I could select net new, pop them into a list, keep it all organized. If you don't have to keep it organized like that, of course, you could always just save from here. Now, a lot of times we're going to be stumbling into just one profile. You don't need to save them in bulk, or if you have sales nav, you'll have access to some additional features on that. So let me pop over to a profile just to show you what you can do with the Apollo Chrome extension so that you can take advantage of all your new connections. Again, Zoe's talking about social selling where you're going to be posting more, engaging with folks more. That's going to allow you to stumble into folks. Maybe they commented on one of your posts. Maybe they're commenting on a post of somebody who's tied in with what you're doing, an influencer or an author, that sort of thing. So in this regard, potentially my sales instruction, I think might be a good fit for somebody who commented on one of my posts, Christopher Mellon. I've connected with this person, but I don't have them saved as a lead. I don't have their contact information. So I could just open, well, let me refresh it. There we go. I think I have too many windows open. So here we go. Christopher Mellon is in my Apollo Chrome extension widget. You'll see on the side here. And it couldn't be simpler. Any profile you're on, you see somebody comment on one of your posts. You see that they're commenting on some other posts that's related to what you do. They like something you posted. You could just open that Chrome extension, hit access email. Now it's saved back to your Apollo. You can go hop over right from there. You'll see all their contact information here. And one of the nice things about that is that, here we go. You have access to all their insights. So news, technologies, hiring, funding, that sort of thing. But even if it's not the right person, if they're engaging with you, saving them as a lead, you now also right through the Chrome extension have access to other people in their organization. You can select net new in bulk or you can pick individual ones, just save them right from there. And there's one thing that tons of people pass up. To me, it's been a game changer is if you're already using this and you're not doing this, maybe start, you'll go to activities and you'll notice that you can pop in notes here and pin it to the top. I like to do this. So if I notice we have a mutual connection, They've done an interview. People love when you quote something they said in an interview. You could pop it in as a note, pin it to the top, and whenever you interact with that lead in Apollo, whether it's today, tomorrow, a year from now, you'll be able to see it right there in the activity feed. Now, I did mention that there's other ways to save and import. So we saw how you can save from the search screen in bulk, all of them are net new, directly from somebody's page. You can also do it from a company page. So let me pop over to one company real quick, just to show you. Let's do this one right here. So if there's a company you're targeted, potentially work targeted accounts, when you hop over to the people page, and if you again have that Apollo Chrome extension, you'll notice that there's something added right here where you can select, hit net new and save to Apollo email, export these or add them to list directly from the page. So potentially you'd add that to a list or a folder titled after Sega. Now, I want to show you how you can import all your connections. Now that you're going to be posting, you're going to take Zoe's challenge. You're going to be posting a lot more, right? You're going to be posting at least once a week. I think we're going to get addicted, find out it's not so hard. We'll be posting every day. People are going to love us. We're going to have 50,000 connections here soon. Maybe you want to do something with that more than just feed it back. Maybe you want to turn those into leads, something you could be a little bit more intentional about. 
So I'm going to walk you through how to import your LinkedIn connections. This work, works for connections from other platforms too, but this is one area that I think a lot of folks would like to do. So the first thing you do is hit your little icon at the top there and go to settings and privacy. It's a little bit hidden. And when you get to this page, go to data privacy. You're going to see that you can get a copy of your data. When you click that, it's just going to ask you, what do you want? I don't want everything. I just want to click this one box and you'll see what you can choose. I'm going to choose connections. You'll request your archive of connections right here. It's saying your download will be ready in about 10 minutes. Last time it took me a little bit longer. Obviously your mileage might vary depending on how many connections you have. And that's going to feed out all this data on all your connections. Ones that right now you're limited to interacting with on LinkedIn. So let me go hop over to Apollo to show you what you can do with that. Once you get that file of all your connections and you log into Apollo, I'll go to the home screen to show you where to go from the start. But you're just going to click on search. That's normally where you'd be searching for leads, but this is also where you can start the process of importing that list of connections. You'll notice there's a button right at the top right. Import, single contact or CSV. If you're going to be doing them onesie, twosie, I would just use the Apollo Chrome extension go to the profile page, hit save. It also gives you that opportunity to look at the insights and save some notes. But when you go to import and select CSV, you won't have to rely on the replay of this. We have a course that'll walk you through this in Apollo Academy. The link will be right in that resource kit under docs. And there's also directions here when you get to this page and you've indicated you want to import connections. There's some limits, like you can't upload a list of a million folks. I don't think any of us are gonna have to be too worried about that, but just select CSV file. There's a template available to make sure yours matches up. It's almost um, no work to pull the LinkedIn file and pop it in. Oops, I selected the wrong one. Here we go. So I'm selecting my output. I didn't want to have everybody waiting to see what happened. And then you're going to see this screen and you'll notice that it's, it's going to try to line up the columns, the fields in Apollo with the ones that are outputted from LinkedIn, first name, last name, just make sure everything's okay. I noticed that the way I have it currently set up, the URL is for their LinkedIn. I've got to change that one. Most of your LinkedIn contacts won't have an email address available when it's downloaded, that's okay. Account name for company. This one I've got to change to their title. And I don't really care about the connected date. If you do care about the date you are connected, you can create a custom field for that so you don't have to override anything else. I'm going to skip that. There's some settings down here if you want to overwrite things, if you want to prioritize maybe your CRM that's synced, whatever it might be. But before you get to the bottom, put them into a list. Keep them organized so you don't have to double back. So I'm going to do my LinkedIn connections, July 2024 and import. You could import a list and not enrich it. It'll just be there available for sorting, filtering, that sort of thing. Or you can import a list and enrich it simply by checking a box and then going right up here to enrich. Now, mind you, there's two different ways to enrich. You can get their main content information available in Apollo, enrich emails. You could also go after the mobile numbers. For some of you, that might be a difference maker. I'll enrich. It'll tell you if there's any duplicates, so you don't have to pay for those. And you'll notice that they're now saved in your account. You've got the contact information. Now you can set up sequences to be intentional about how you might be interacting with some of the folks on LinkedIn. That's going to be a lot more interesting, a lot more powerful if you're selling bigger deals, longer turn time, that sort of thing. But for a lot of situations, that can be really impactful. So let me go to the last piece here, which are the sequences. Now, if you've ever used sequences in Apollo, you'll have noticed that there's four different LinkedIn steps. There's only two email, one phone call, but there's four LinkedIn steps. And a few of them are potentially, I get a lot of questions on these, like how would I use this? What is the point of it? So let me just show you real quick. When you go to add your steps, right at the bottom there, you got four different LinkedIn tasks. Send connection request is the most popular. That actually is in one of the most used tasks of the top 1% of Apollo users right? When they're following it four five or six times, they're doing that. You also have send message. Doesn't require paid LinkedIn sales navigator. That's a normal message. That's a great option for working leads that you've imported from your LinkedIn. 
view of profile and interact with folks. Zoe was talking about engaging with folks, commenting on people's posts, liking what they're doing. This is a way that you can be intentional and structured about making sure you're doing it. Somebody the other day told me, wasn't that kind of fake? You're only interacting with people's posts because you put it into a sequence. And just because it shows up doesn't mean you have to do it. Doesn't even mean when you click the one button and Apollo takes you to their page that they've got anything up there. It's just setting up a reminder and a cadence so that you're checking, giving yourself the chance to interact with their stuff and not miss it. So that's some ways that you can pull everything together. Your LinkedIn searching, however you're doing that and saving it back to Apollo, setting up sequences so you could be making sure you're interacting with folks, potentially taking it offline, phone call, email. Really great if you see something they posted, you really liked it, mention it. People like to see that.